Now, until proven otherwise, we're going with the number one player in the game, <laughs> Christian Petrarca. Nice to have you nice, back to 360. You. Was, well, last time, you just hit on the head. It was FaceTimed at the back of a pub, so it's finally good to be in person. It's nice to see you. Congratulations. <laughs> on the Congra I'm no, I was in a little capacitated last year, so I, I missed the last eight weeks, and I was wrapped for you, Thank mate. You. you came on the show last year. You, We've never had anyone <laughs> more scared on TV like you were <laughs> 12 months ago, and look at you now. I was nervous. Yeah, look I at was, you now. I, I lost my voice a couple of times when I started speaking. But... Norm Smith, medalist, premiership player. Hasn't life changed? How much has life changed in, in, um, in 12 months for you? It hasn't, and, it hasn't really, no? to be honest. I mean, yeah, the accolades and winning a premiership's amazing, but as a person, I haven't changed. I... Trust me, you're better on TV than you were 12 <laughs> yeah, months ago. Done a bit of practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, it's honestly, it's been amazing um, being able to get back home. But that's probably the one thing was bittersweet. I mean, winning over in Perth was an amazing feeling, but not having my parents, my brothers, my girlfriend, my friends there was was quite tough. And even doing like the lap of honour when you sort of have the Premiership Cup, you sort of just have taken selfies with nobodies. So it's sort of don't know anyone you really know. So coming home, experiencing that with them was just amazing because they've been on this journey with me so um, but then summer comes around and um, everything opens up and you're in a city suburbs you see your faces on fences and <laughs> Melbourne flags everywhere it's pretty it's pretty cool how do you how do you keep a um, how do you stop it from going to your head uh, my girlfriend's pretty good to shut me down yeah she? she's <laughs> no the footy clubs are like that footy clubs are great and it's, it's funny, we were saying this day one of pre-season, you, we haven't really had much time to reflect on it. I think it's something when you retire you realise what we've actually done, but you just got to go again. Like, footy's just a crazy game where you just got to go straight, OK, well, let's, let's try and do this again for 2022. You did an interview with the Herald Sun pre-season magazine. You said, I, get, I don't get paid to sit in my arse at home. Clayton Oliver said on Monday in the Supercoach launch that you... You're fitter. Are you are you lighter? Have um, you done some made some changes to your to your shape? Oh, I haven't. I haven't. Um, oh, I think as a you always try to improve. You always try to get better as a player. You, you're never perfect. So for me, I'm always trying to get to the next level. Um, yeah, I haven't changed as a player to be honest. I think over summer. The reason why I said that is because first I got back and we're in COVID. So <laughs> the only thing I could do was go out for a run or go for a gym. My girlfriend works nine till five, so she wanted me out of the house. So <laughs> go, going for a run was, was my outlet. So that was my thing. So when I saw those things, it wasn't really that I was working hard. It was more just getting out of the house and just enjoying back, you know, being in Melbourne and being amongst it. So the actual game and the replay and the doco that was on last night <laughs> and the package that will be played at the season launch, Tonight, what does all of that mean to you? Are you in, uh, are you in a place to be reflective of it while still preparing for a week's time? Yeah, I am. I probably watched the third quarter a couple hundred times, so it's um, oh, it's something you think about every day. How how can I get back to that feeling of of what we had? It was just an amazing feeling. It's everything you think of when you win a premiership, but um, times a hundred. It's just crazy. So for us. Uh, well, for me, it's, it's, just, it's just knowing what we did well last year and just improving from that. And, um, yeah, I mean, 2022 is an exciting year. There's a lot of expectation for us, but, um, you know, we're, we're, we're facing that. We're, we're excited. We're, uh, we're not shying away from it. Thanks for going back to the game. Of all the means of acts that happen in that game, and you can't say anything that you did, what was the one thing that you just absolutely loved that one of your teammates did in that game? Oh, I mean, that third quarter, we were, we were nervous. Yeah, we, we were nervous. And when Bond kicked that third yeah, goal, everyone yeah. was going, oh, Bond. I was, I was shit myself, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Were you really? Yeah, I was. I mean, I think, firstly, the momentum in first and second quarter was a lot. Mm. It was a lot. And... They, that, that, the first three minutes or four minutes of that third quarter, the ball was down our D50 for a lot of time. So for him to kick that goal, it pushed it out to 19 points, and that was a big margin for that game. Um, so we're pretty nervous, but I thought the way Angus Brayshaw put his body on the line numerous times in that grand final was, was especially in that third quarter, he, he went back with the fly of the footy or on Shaki, I think, and mm. from there we just went, I think we kicked three or four goals. So I probably didn't answer your question cr um, correctly, but... When I watched that docker last night, the 
I think when you first get to the league, you're sort of a bit um, naive of the history of the footy club. You sort of, I think Jack Real touched on it last year, but you've, when you first start, you just want to play a game and, you know, get noticed as a player. But then, you know, you get to my age, 24, 25, 26 now, and you realise um, the history of the footy club. Like, I, I was watching that. And I, I didn't realise we played in the 1988 grand final. Um, I knew we played in 2000. But they're just the amount of people that... Um, have gone before us and played for the Red and Blue and how proud they are for us. And um, we had Rod Grinter speak to us last night at our, um, our launch for new, new players and he spoke about that. He spoke about the WhatsApp of the, you know, the past players and there's 160 to 200 people on there now. And The club was in a difficult time and they burnt a lot of bridges. And he said, And he said that and he, and he spoke about a lot of players who felt like that the club sort of um, burnt them. Uh, they've come back and they've come back and they love being um, a Melbourne person, which is, I think, is amazing. So the, the joy that you brought yourself and your family and your friends and your girlfriend and everyone you mentioned, can you, can you tell us about the people you've met that you didn't know <laughs> and explain the joy that they describe to you as, as being Melbourne supporters? The, the 70, 80, 90-year-olds, <laughs> yes. you know, mate. A lot of thank yous, which is quite funny. Thank, like, just thank you for doing what you did. Yeah. Like, it's very funny. And every, I find when you're a supporter, everyone's very like, oh, I've been a member 57 years. Yeah. Oh, I've been a member 58 years. <laughs> it's almost like a competition. Who's, <laughs> who's the number one supporter? We were doing a um, speaking gig like a month ago and someone spoke and um, a, an old lady spoke and she said how at half time she had a heart attack. She, she had to go to the ambulance and she couldn't watch the third and fourth quarter. Wow. Yeah, so she watched the first two quarters and... So then she woke up and we were um, singing the song. So it was like just ama- just crazy stories. How much it means to him. It's just it's crazy. That is a that's a wonderful <laughs> yeah, it's, story. It's, it's pretty good. Let you survive. Yeah, so that's a great connection. So the journey of being the defending premier. Have you uh, has Simon Goodwin framed that? Have you thought about it? Our sport, other sports, as to what what that task is to repeat success. Yeah, we have. We, we hit on the head pretty early from day one in December. Um, we like to reference a little bit of the All Blacks and their success and their sustained success. It doesn't mean winning back to back to back to back. It's just about building a culture of sustained success and creating the habits that are consistent. And um, Yeah, for us, we, as I said before, we understand that there's going to be expectation. We're the reigning premiers. And, um, but I, I love it. Like I think it's exciting. I think... We've gone from playing Sunday 110 graveyard shifts to Friday nights under the lights. It's uh, and a Wednesday night season opener. So, for Melbourne fans, who who would have thought they'd be going to the game on a Wednesday night? It's uh, it's pretty good. Last Thursday night, we all watched it, and you're giving away 50 metre penalties. I'm sitting at home going, Grits and shut up. I didn't give it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. You, so I find it then. You're an umpire. That's 50. Yeah. Yeah. So when he said 50. Did you think what have I what did what did I do? I was, I was frustrated because I, I missed a kick and um, and then I really wanted to take my frustration out of the tackle and Cripps he, he was he slipped he slipped and he was laughing so Cripps was laughing yeah. and I was just frustrated with myself and, and then fifty and Gornick up to me and. And Here it is. Did he duck or slip? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Oh, so, I was so frustrated. Did you think it was your so, fault? So everyone goes to me after the 7th, like 7.50, yeah, mate, yeah. come on. Like, what are you doing? Gordy so is goes, that what Max is And I'm like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And he's like, don't, stop deflecting it onto someone else. And I said, no, it was actually Tom McDonald. And Tom goes, oh, I said it. I think, yeah, it's, we laugh at it, but it, I understand the ruling. Like, it's, we're stopping... It's really important, No, mate. it is. It is. It's I mean, really important. I think we've got to come to the fact that, like, the umpires have the hardest job in the game. They've got arguably 44 players who aren't on their side, all the bench, and... And 80,000. And 80,000 80, <laughs> 80, people. people who are yelling at them from the sideline. So we understand that. And I think it's a great rule. Um, I'm happy that... Well, I'm fortunate that we, we gave them away then rather than... Because that, that would have cost us four points in a game. So yep. we've learned from it. We had an intra club today and we, we um, the, the, the coaches were the umpires and it was it was good. We, we had to bite our tongue a fair bit, so it was good. Just go with Sir, I reckon. <laughs> Just before, uh, we'll play around with the number one. Uh, when, the, when the Simon Goodwin story uh, regarding 12 months ago and the concerns around his behaviour was written, and I've heard a lot of you speak in the aftermath, did you feel defensive of him, given the journey that you've lived together. I'm curious as to how it sat with you. I actually had no 
idea of the actual articles that came out. I, I don't actually really don't know what happened. All I know is there's some sort of form, form of bullying. I, I honestly don't know. Um, we all reached out to him, of course. When someone like that is being um, provoked in the media for something, we, we're always going to stand up for, for our club. And um, oh, from, my, from my personal point of view, I mean, Goody's an amazing person and um, we have the amazing relationship. And you called him a father figure. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, that's a big word, well, father 20, figure, well, mate. In 2018, 2019, I wasn't going great as a player and as a person, probably more than a player. And he's always stuck by me and, and given me such amazing advice. And I think it'd be more concerning if we weren't, if we didn't have a beer with our coach. I thought it'd be more mm. the other way around. Like the fact that he's, the fact that we as players are able to have a drink with our boss. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Like, I think it's awesome, the fact that we're able to have that relationship and be vulnerable and open up to each other. I think that's what um, footy clubs sort of... If you have that relationship with the coach, you, you want to play for him. Mm. What do you think about being Robbo's number one? <laughs> it's a it's good a bit, class it's a, bit bi it's, it's a bit biased. It's a bit biased. Warren Dyke. Yeah, boys. Warren Dyke <laughs> bias from me. It, it, it's just... Mike Sheen started the top 50 in about 1992. I took it over about 11 years ago. We put a lot of thought into it. Mike did and, and, and I did. Um, your performance last year, and you had a really good year the year before, but you, your performance last year, at the end of the year, I had you as number one in the comp, and I saw no reason, Jared, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over summer to, to change from what you'll be able to, personally, what you had to produce yeah. last year. But, and you would aspire to be the best, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we're all competitors. We, we want to be the best that we are, and, and individually and as a team. You know, no one wants to be number two in terms of our team success or anything. So for me, um, that is very humbling. So thank you for that. You um, said at 16 you want to be the best player in the competition, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, <laughs> I said I wanted to be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> I've said a lot of things. I've said a lot of things. That might still happen, mate. You're only 20. We'll see how we go. If um, you had to sit down, if the Herald Sun said, Christian, give me your top five players, but you can't and you're not going to name yourself, who would you have as the number one player? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'd have... I'd have and there's my top five on, on the screen right now. Oh. And the important thing there, there's three Melbourne players in my top five. It's funny game. you said before, Jared. I could... There's three of us. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even be in the top two of my team. It's pretty funny that you said yeah. that. Um, oh, I'd have, I'd have Clary first, Clayton. Oh, he's just... He's unbelievable what he's able to do, transform his game. Because he's always been a possession getter, but the way he's able to expand his game and um, develop that kick inside 50 and kick goals, I think that's awesome. Remember when Brendan McCartney said, of all the people, he actually quickens up when he goes to contest? Yeah. It was a great line. Yep. Now when you watch he, he's, Oliver he's play... He stops his feet a little bit. But he, he go, the way he goes yeah. away from, from the contest... Yeah. As well, mate. Yeah. He's yeah. he's a fabulous player. Oliver one. Who Oliver you one. Oh, jeez, this is tough. I'd go Bont second. Three. Um, geez, Gorney will hate me. <laughs> no, we won't. I'll go Dusty third. Um, I'll go Gorney four. Who's five? Five's a tough one. Um, Robbo's next set of five. North oh, I got to. I got to go. I got to go, Buddy Franklin. I think he's just he's an absolute star of the game. Yeah. And one of the arguably one of the greatest of all times. I hope he is. He, he's five goals away, isn't he? He's five goals away and to who become they got the round one. They got GWS, who beat him by a point in the elimination final last year. It'd be pretty cool if he did the MCG. Yeah, well, his first tour in Sydney, quite deliberately to. Do oh, fair enough. City. I think it'd be yeah, pretty enough. cool to do it in front of the, yeah. the Sydney. What's the go with COVID? Can can people jump the fence? Uh, <laughs> Try telling people they can't. <laughs> yeah. I think is the issue there, Christian. Um, can't wait to live this journey. Uh, thank you, you having much. lived last year as well. So uh, go well this time next week, eh? Oh, no, it's exciting. Seven days <laughs> in the first quarter. Thank you, guys. Great Christian to see you, Petrarca, Back with us on AFL 360. We're going to head to the AFL launch next. The life members being inducted. Thank you.